Hey guys, it's Mike Pan, I'm Binding Warrior Martial Arts, and as you can see, I am not in my typical filming location or my typical training location uh, as of this filming. Um, I'm actually attending the Kickstart Kids training conference here in Houston, Texas as I'm recording this. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Kickstart Kids, it is a nonprofit founded by Chuck Norris. Yes, the Chuck Norris. Uh, we offer a character education martial arts curriculum in the middle schools here in the state of Texas. And I'm actually hanging out with a lot of high-level martial artists this week. Um, Kickstart Kids, there's so many uh, martial artists from different backgrounds. You got Tang Sudo black belts, Taekwondo black belts, you know, uh, you name it. They're, they're all here. It's been a really great week and uh, I just wanted to make a video for my fellow martial arts. Maybe you're on the road like me and you're kind of stuck in a hotel room and you want to get some training in, but maybe you're kind of trying to figure out what that is and you're trying to figure out how to do that. So in this video, I want to present a video of how you can train successfully in a hotel room with minimal equipment. Um, and I want to show part of my routine, some of the things that I like to do while I'm on the road training, um, as well as some items that I bring on the road with me to maximize training in a hotel room or a hotel room space. Now, the advice I'm going to be giving in this video um, is primarily designed for a hotel environment, but in reality, this can apply if you're in a small, tiny apartment in, in an urban area. This can apply if you're in a dorm room. This can apply if you're just, you know, a new dad who's stuck at home and you can't leave to get to the gym and you just need something quick <laughs> that you can do with minimal equipment that you can do at your house. So whatever situation you find yourself in, um, I think this video will help you. Um, and again, I'm a uh, martial arts, but I'm specifically a Filipino martial arts practitioner. So there's going to be a lot of things in this video that will really apply to my fellow Kali artists and discriminate practitioners. But again, I think this can help you whether you're a martial artist or Filipino martial artist or even just a fitness guy. I think this can help you. All right. So a lot of people ask me about my hotel routine or my hotel fitness routine or martial arts training routine. I'm not only going to show you necessarily a routine in this video per se, but I do want to show you some things that I like to do if I'm in a hotel um, that kind of, so you kind of create your own routine, right? I don't want to show you exactly what I do because your needs, your body type, your athleticism may be different than mine. Um, and your needs may be different than mine. Your martial art may be different than mine. So I don't want to do, show you exactly what I do, but I do want to give you some ideas of things that you can borrow and maybe adapt to what your needs are and uh, hopefully inspire you to continue training while you're on the road. Uh, now, a lot of people ask me, you know, do you run, do you use the gym in the hotel room? And honestly, I like to, like when I travel with my wife, typically what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, look ahead and see if there's a, a decent uh, hotel gym in the hotel that we're staying in if we ever go out of town. Um, and usually, I and I don't need much. I'm not a big bodybuilder guy. I don't need a lot of fan. I don't use cardio equipment. I don't need any of those things. If I can just get a small space to jump rope in, do footwork drills in, I'm good. I don't need a lot of space. If there's a pull-up bar, even better. I can knock out some pull-ups. I can do some calisthenics. I'm good. But again, I know some people out there have different needs. So what I what I tend to do is in the morning, uh, before my family's awake or before the day begins, I'll usually go running. I'll do my footwork drills and my running drills outside in the parking lot um, of the hotel or if there's a nice park outside. Like when I visited Tokyo uh, with my wife for our one-year anniversary, our wedding anniversary, I actually went to Yoyogi Park and I just ran and did my footwork drills all over this beautiful park. Definitely look up Yoyogi Park if you don't know what it is. In Tokyo, it's beautiful. Uh, but I was running all over the place and I was doing my footwork drills and probably catching a lot of weird attention doing like, you know, triangle footwork and reverse forward shuffles and all these things. But uh, it was just a great way to train. And so I tend to do a lot of cardio when I'm on the road, not so much strength conditioning while I'm on the road. Um, and if I am doing strength conditioning, it's mostly calisthenics. And it's usually just enough to maintain my strength until I get back home. All right, guys, so these are just some of the items that I bring with me when I'm on the road, if I'm traveling, if I'm staying in a hotel, if I know I'm not gonna be in a, uh, a, a standard or typical training space for, for a few days, I typically carry these in my suitcase, right, my check-in luggage, to make sure that wherever I go, I can get a good training session in, right? So let's start here on the left. Uh, this is just a jump rope, right? And um, if you guys have ever done jumping rope, you'll know it requires a ton of coordination, a ton of stamina, ton of endurance, and a ton of timing, right? And this is one of the items that I bring with me pretty much everywhere I go. I've traveled to overseas, I've traveled all over the US, and typically I'll have a jump rope in my check-in luggage, or sometimes even my carry-on luggage. Uh, so it's really easy, it's very lightweight, it develops, again, stamina, develops coordination and timing, um, and these are all attributes that you need to succeed in martial arts, specifically in the Filipino martial arts, which I'll get to in a second, uh, because it requires a high level of hand-eye coordination. I find that the jump rope, it allows me to get a great coordination, conditioning, cardio conditioning workout in anywhere I'm at in the world. Um, and it costs, I mean, this, this rope cost me about 20 bucks. You could probably get them at like five below for five bucks, obviously. Uh, but you know, I've used these for so long and it's a fantastic thing to bring with you anywhere you go. So jump ropes are a must in my opinion. Definitely learn how to jump rope get good at it. I don't jump rope in 
a hotel room just because as you can see it's very small confines here there wouldn't be really anywhere for me to jump and also i know for a fact that i have neighbors underneath me that would not appreciate me jumping rope especially early in the morning so i'll tend to bring this jump rope out into the parking lot with me or i'll bring it to this, the uh, fitness gym if the hotel has a good gym i usually jump rope in the gym for a few minutes as well okay so over here i actually have on this side this is actually an atian zakali polymer long blade trainer you, got, you guys can get this off their website i think it's only maybe 25 bucks right now um, I like to bring this when I'm on the road, um, even though I have, um, you know, the Atian Zakali sword trainers. As you guys know, I'm an Atian Zakali instructor and practitioner. Um, and even though Atian Zakali has amazing long blade uh, trainers that are made of aluminum, this one is actually very light. Um, it's very lightweight because it is polymer, and I find that I can actually bring it uh, in a suitcase. It doesn't add too much weight to the suitcase, right? So if there's a, being that most uh, weight limits are 50 pounds, and I got a lot of clothes, I got a lot of stuff I got to bring with me, you know, um, training armor, training gear, things like that. This helps me save a little bit of weight. It's not ideal because I do prefer to train with the long blade trainers, uh, but I just find that this works for me temporarily if I'm gone for a few days, right? Over here, this is a uh, rattan stick, as you guys probably know. This is actually 20 inches. Typically, the sticks that I like to run with are and practice with are 31 inches. Um, and I have, I might make a video as to why that is, uh, but this is a 20 inch stick simply because it fits in the bag, <laughs> the check-in luggage, I, the 31 inch stick was a little too big. So I'll bring typically a 20 inch stick wherever I go. And also this doesn't really raise a lot of red flags. I mean, I could, you know, I, I remember I was, um, down at the beach, uh, recently, uh, with family and early in the morning, I went to train at the beach by myself and I brought this with me and no one really bothered me. When I was practicing my movements with this, didn't really give me a hard time. Um, it's not very big, doesn't catch a lot of attention. So I like to bring in a 20 inch stick in my check in luggage wherever I go. Small, it's easy to travel with, and very discreet. Okay, uh, now I got my Atian Zakali knife trainers here. Uh, these are dull knife trainers. I'll take out one of them. This is an old school one from way back. Um, this is these are dull aluminum knife trainers of different sizes um and the reason why i bring these is because obviously i practice satyanza kali as you guys know and um i like to have my knife trainer so i could practice my blade movements and th these are also very lightweight but they also have the same um look as a lot of the live blades that Tuan Carl uh, Atienza creates and makes. So this matches a lot of the, the live blades that he makes. And so it gives me a sense of realism when I'm training. Um, and these are just fantastic trainers. And they've, I mean, I've had this one for over 10 years. This thing has lasted a very, very long time. Um, and so I like to bring these when I practice my knife work in hotel room, uh, practicing my movements along with stick and dagger, things like that. Now you're probably wondering what this is for. Uh, this little cross wall, I'll show you some ex exercises we can do with this. I like to travel with this because I am, well, I'm not necessarily old, but I am 35 and so I'm feeling a lot more tightness in my shoulders and my muscles and my back. So I like to use that lacrosse ball for myofascial release, right? But I also like to use it for coordination training. Right, so I'm gonna show you some things that you can do in a hotel room with a lacrosse ball um, that can develop your hand-eye coordination for martial arts. All right, so anytime you walk into a hotel room, you'll notice that as you close the door behind you, there's usually a very small walkway area. And a lot of people just ignore this area. They will go right to their beds or they throw this up on the table or whatever and just kind of relax. But for me, when I walk into any hotel room, wherever I'm at in the world, I know that this is gonna be my training center. Right, a lot of people think that's crazy because why would you want to train in a place so tiny and small? But in reality, that's the beauty of it. Because in a real self-defense situation, you might find yourself in a very, very close range situation, fighting a person. You might be fighting in a uh, bathroom stall. You might be fighting in between cars in a, in a parking lot. You might be fighting, um, you know, at leaving uh, your bedroom to investigate something in the hallway that might have happened. Like you have to get used to fighting in tight, small spaces. So I like to practice my stick techniques, for instance, in a tight, small space. And this is perfect for that. So the goal right now is for me to not hit the walls. I don't want to ruin the paint on the wall. I don't want to hit the door jams or the walls around me. My goal is to stay in this little tiny box and actually do my techniques without damaging the environment around me. So I'll usually start right here and we'll take the first three shots, the first three strikes of what we call the Bayani 7. I'll show you those first three strikes. If you're a student of mine, you know what these are already, but this is for those of you who don't know it already. Um, and I'll show you how we do it. So from here, I'm going to go strike one, two, three. One, two, and three, just like so. All right, we're going to go here to the other side. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. So I'm doing my forehand slash, backhand jab, and a ring down and down. All right, I can face forward again. If you notice, I'm being very conscious of the space around me. I'm being very conscious to not hit the walls or damage the environment around me. This is not only teaching me spatial awareness and environmental awareness, but it's also teaching me how to keep my technique nice, and crisp, right? Very tight form. I want to make sure I'm not swinging or overly telegraphing. It's forcing me to have 
good form, and I don't need a lot of equipment for this at all. If you are a boxer, you can also adjust this, so I won't need to sit for this, but you can actually work your boxing techniques in here. You can work your technique, your bobbing, your weaving, all the things in, that you need to do in a small space, right? Um, if you do kicking or spray taekwondo, you can actually execute your kicks in a small space without damaging the walls around you. Okay, whatever martial art you do, you can do it in this space. It's gonna teach you spatial awareness, environmental awareness, but also crisp, clean, striking technique. Martial arts, we do a lot of stick and knife techniques. You've probably seen this in other styles. Um, and this is definitely a staple of our system here. Uh, but we wanna know how to do this in a small, confined space. So yes, I could do this in a small, confined space, as you see, right? I can work my strikes. And I'm very conscious to not hit the walls around me. Now, going back to the stick and knife techniques that we demonstrated earlier in this video, uh, we can adapt that to the, the crossbow. So what I would do is I would take a strike and on my way to say the next block into strike, into the thrust of the blade, I train catching this ball. Let me show you what I mean. So I would bounce this ball, strike, and then catch it. Notice my posture. So the posture that I would do with stick and dagger or stick and knife, right? I would simply adapt that to the stick of a crossbow, right? So I'm gonna do a little strike, I'm gonna bounce it, and I pass that line, I'm gonna reach it, right? So again, I bounce it first, I strike and I catch. Notice again, small, tight, close quarters. I'm not hitting the walls. I'm working my checking hand, my blade hand in this hand, and I'm still working my stick fighting. So let's say you're, you wanna work on some punches or some you know, hand-eye coordination stuff for, for Filipino martial arts, boxing even. Um, this is actually a really good drill to do. Maybe you've seen this before, but all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this little cross ball, I'm gonna bounce it, track it, extend my hand. So I'm training, extending my hand for a cross or even grabbing someone, right? This is very important. So again, I'm gonna take my right hand, bounce it, turn and catch, right? Bring it back. Keep my guard up, turn and catch, turn and catch. If I wanna do that with a lead hand, I can do the same thing. Just keep this hand up, work my jab. Work my jab. Work my jab or grabbing an opponent. Now in Filipino martial arts, you probably will see something that looks like this, right? Roof block to thrust, right? With a blade, right? Very common in our system and very common in a lot of Filipino martial arts. Without the blade, it looks something like this, where you're roof blocking, you're coming in, you're checking and controlling the arm or the weapon of the, of the opponent, right? Now, how do we adapt this to the lacrosse ball? So all I would do is I would bounce this and execute the movement. So I create a little timeline in my head of when I can catch it. And this is just something I like to do to develop my hand-eye coordination, my timing when I'm on the road. And again, this is best to do if you're not on the second floor or third floor of a building. I like to do this when I'm on the first floor of a building, preferably in my hotel room or if not in a uh, hotel fitness gym, which is on the first floor typically, because um, you don't want to bother anyone below you. But if you have the opportunity to run this, you guys can develop your timing and hand-eye coordination and your martial arts techniques um, in a very effective and cost-effective way as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you're a martial artist, regardless of your style, I hope you embrace what we show in this video, what I showed in this video. Um, again, as a Filipino martial arts teacher and practitioner, I'm focused a lot more on weapons-based techniques. But again, if you're a boxer, Muay Thai guy, karate guy, taekwondo person, whatever, you can adjust the methods I showed in this video to your style, right? And so I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you have any suggestions, any comments, please shoot them below. I look forward to hearing from you guys, all right?